Welcome to the third installment of how to do a lit review. If you have missed part one or part two of this lesson, please check out the description box below for the links. This is Dr. J talking thesis in 101, where you hope your classmate is just as behind as you are. In the series, we cover tips and tricks to help you on your research journey. Let's get right into it. So far, we have identified our themes in lesson one and created a coherent lit review structure in lesson two. Now it is time for phase three, writing. One issue that students have, whether a novice or seasoned researcher, is ending the reading process and starting the writing process. This is the same feeling as binge watching a series and then trying to start a new one. My advice to you is take a few days to re-energize and then try to write. Just a warning. First up, you, the researcher, the person, have nothing to say at this point. You must have an opinion and should have a story to tell, but that opinion and story must be rooted in existing literature, not your personal experience on the topic. I mean, it is literally called a literature review. If you followed step one and two of the series, you should be good in avoiding making your own stuff up. If you are really worried about this, here are a few tips to ensure that whatever you write is based on literature. Validate your theme. This is making sure that you have enough information that you copied and pasted from papers to tell a story. This will limit the temptation to write things that are not rooted in existing literature. To give even more granular advice, these are the checks that you can do. Check one, how many authors do you have per theme? Now I cannot give you an exact number of when enough is enough, but you can do some sense checking. I mean, you don't have to put an elephant on a scale to know that it's heavy. For instance, Looking at the characteristics of a digital native, we only have two authors. Considering this topic has been discussed for a few decades, two papers are obviously not enough. As a result, we know that we need to go and get more. Check two, how old are your references? In our example, they are pretty old. In this context, later references should be included. So you may want to find references on the subject that are much newer. One way you can find references for a specific time frame is to go on Google Scholar and to select your time frame for the papers. Check three. Do you have any notes on the theme? In our case, yes, we do. We were questioning things around age, so we could find papers discussing different authors' opinion on who they consider as a digital native. Check four. Did my special friend whom I presented my research to have any questions around this theme? Let's say they had. They wanted to know if they were considered a digital native because they were born in 1993. To answer this question, you had to go back to papers to see what the original authors were saying. That's enough checks for now. Let's get to writing. Here is a practical example of how you can give your opinion and tell a story that is rooted in literature, i.e. giving a literature review. As you can see, we went back to literature and fleshed it out a bit. By the way, those are real authors and papers, I just didn't have the time to find the excerpts. You will note that we have some sub-themes here that we created when we did our literature review structure in the previous lesson. So we are just going to take one heading at a time, and that will be the main heading. The subheadings can wait. Read your heading carefully and think of the purpose of that heading. What is it that you want your reader to know after you tell your story on this particular heading? In our example, we want the reader to understand that there is a group of people of around a similar age who we call the net generation or digital natives. This is to create the foundation because we cannot talk about the value of technology in the classroom without describing who is in the classroom. Now that we know what the outcome is, we read that section from top to bottom. While we read, we think about the best way to synthesize all this information into one clear and concise idea. We notice that different authors are calling this group of people by different names. Also, the age group in the opinion of the authors are different too. So you may want to note to the reader that you've read many papers, i.e. you did a lit review on the subject, but you couldn't find consensus around what to call these people or how old these people are. Create the heading in your lit review as per the structure that you created in your working Word document. Now create your story. You can write, 
Many authors have a slight difference of opinion regarding the origin point for the net generation on the timeline, but these differences are marginal. This sentence is your opinion that you form based on what you have read in published sources such as articles, books, press releases, etc. You now have to convince the reader that you have in fact read the literature which led you to have this opinion. You do this by adding in-text referencing. Now this is a tricky one. If you add the in-text referencing at the end of the sentence, the reader will interpret the sentence as the words of all these authors. But these are not their words. This is your opinion. So you need to find another way to show that you have read the papers. You can get a little creative and based on the purpose of what we want to achieve, we can create a timeline. On this timeline, you can show the papers you have read, what each author calls this group of people, and the age group these authors say this group of people belong to. Whenever introducing a figure, equation, or table, you have to add a caption. And introduce the figure so that the reader have a clear instruction on how to interpret your sentence with the figure. Once you have written your story on the heading, delete the heading and its copy and paste the data so you know you already synthesized the information. In this particular example, we will only delete the copy and paste the data because the main heading still has subheadings. Let's move on to the subheading as the last example. Let's focus on the characteristic digitally literate. Remember, read your heading carefully and think of the purpose of that heading. In this example, we want the reader to understand that the net generation are a group of people that are digitally literate. It is important that the reader understand this characteristic because it is pertinent to our topic of technology in the classroom. In our previous example, the guide was to read the heading end to end, but if that doesn't work for you, you can read and write intermittently per section. For instance, in this copied and pasted section, Oblinger and friends are stating that the digital native has a concrete understanding of technology. First, I copy and paste the subheading from a working document into my literature review. Thereafter, I position my heading as per my lit review structure that I created in the previous lesson. I then write my story, which is that the digital native has a concrete understanding of technology and has sophisticated skills in the usage thereof. Of course, I then add my in-text referencing stating that Oblinger and friends have stated this in 2005. In my working document, I delete that section because I have already dealt with it. Then of course I move on to the next section, which is Prensky. I realize that he is saying the exact same thing as the previous author. So all I do is edit my referencing to add Prensky. If you have a referencing tool, the tool will automatically fix the in-text referencing. Again, delete the section that you have already dealt with. Now I'm reviewing what Tapscott have said. I've noticed that Tapscott is saying the exact same thing, so I add his reference to the existing ones. By now you would have noticed why it was so important to create the themes as you were reading and to add the author after each copied and pasted section. This was to ensure that all the information regarding that theme was in one central place so you can read it all at once again when you were ready to write. Going back to our working document, we are moving to the next author. Palfrey is saying something different to the other authors, however it is still related to the digitally literate characteristic. While the other author said what the characteristic was, Palfrey is expanding on that by adding what makes a digital native that way. In this instance, we cannot just add Palfrey to the existing referencing. We have to expand on our story too. So in our literature review we add, this may be attributed to the digital native only ever knowing a technology reliant world where much of their lives are experienced online, whether through social networks, online gaming or any other web-based applications. Of course, we now have to add Palfrey as a reference. This means that the reader will interpret the first sentence as being said by the first three authors and the second sentence to be said by Palfrey. Since we have dealt with this sub-theme, we can delete all the information that is remaining under the theme and delete the heading of the theme too. 
Repeat this process for every heading that you have. Before you know it, your literature review will be done. One thing to remember as you write, you may find that the original placement of themes may shift in order to tell your story better. This may also extend to existing things that you have written in your literature review. In summary, looking at the entire lit review series, copy and paste the themes into a blank document. Create a flow for your story. Check if you have enough data to support your story. Then synthesize all you have read into one coherent story. That's it from me. I hope this practical lesson will help you tell your story. Don't forget to hit the subscribe button and to activate the notification bell. Let me know what you would like to see in the next series of tutorials. Signing off.